Hey YouTube, welcome to the Off-Grid Mountain Homestead. Let's talk about batteries today and EMPs. No, not alkaline batteries. I wouldn't do that to you. But yeah, alkaline batteries are EMP safe. Well, let's get into the main content. All right, let's get started with the tank of batteries. This is like a battle tank. An old flooded lead acid deep cycle battery. You can't kill these things. They're bulletproof with the exception of actually sending a bullet through them. So these... uh deep cycle lead acid batteries uh, AGM absorbent glass mat sealed lead acid or gel batteries which is plates and electrolyte are impervious to electromagnetic pulses coronal mass ejections etc so they win lead acid wins in that account but as far as uh, energy density for the weight and cycle life stuff like that they don't win against lithium but if you want a completely EMP proof battery bank your best option is going to be lead acid batteries. You're going to have to have a lot more battery to get the equivalent drawdown rate of lithium, and you're going to have a you know a lot of weight as far as the mass of the batteries. It's, you're going to have a huge battery bank to equate to a, a lithium iron phosphate battery or lithium ion battery. So that's the biggest drawback to lead batteries. Uh, it's just the weight and the drawdown capacity. You don't really want to draw them down below 50% daily and you're still limited on your amount of cycles you get out of that uh, if you can only draw them down you know 25 or 30 percent a day you'll you'll almost double your life expects to have a lead acid battery give or take you know these aren't exact numbers just a, a ballpark rule of thumb but you have to you know double or triple the size of your battery bank compared to lithium with lead batteries but there's nothing to fail on them short of you putting a wrench across them and shorting them out or actually, you know, sending, a, sending something through it to puncture it and let the electrolyte leak. But with a flooded battery like this one, if you're using it daily, you'll also have to check the electrolyte levels and specific gravities and things like that. But that's not what this video is about. Just want to cover, you know, the most resilient battery for your off-grid or backup power system. So now let's talk about lithium iron phosphate batteries. Very energy dense. Very good batteries, high cycle count, fast recharge rates, et cetera, et cetera. We're not getting in all the battery details today, but lithium iron phosphate batteries do have weaknesses. I have a representative example. No, I'm not sawing into one of these big monster batteries, but I have a smaller sample battery we're gonna look at in just a second to show you the weak point on the lithium iron phosphate batteries. So without further ado, let's get into looking at the actual inner workings of a lithium iron phosphate battery. Right, so here is a lithium iron phosphate battery pack. You can see the BMS right here on top. And quick intro to the BMS if you're new to solar stuff. The BMS is the battery management system. It controls the uh, current in and out of the battery, checks for temperatures of the battery, balances the cells, uh, has a high and low voltage limit in it to protect the battery, so on and so forth. Just a basic overview. If you want to know more about BMSs, I can cover that in a future video, but I'm trying to focus on EMP protection today. Just so you have a little basic understanding of what we're what I'm talking about, you know, when I refer to BMS in this video. So this is lithium iron phosphate with built-in BMS. You see it's cylindrical cells. Now the zooms I showed you a minute ago has square, what they call square automotive cells, a little bit different design. I don't have the you know, the resources to be able to uh, you know cut and gut a uh, $700 zooms battery. So we're going to have to work with this little test sample here. So that's the best I can do for today. So how do you protect a lithium iron phosphate battery from an EMP? Well, that's a tough, a tough subject there. There's not really a good surefire guaranteed way to protect the battery. Now the cells, just like a lead acid cell, these are just pretty basic, nothing to tear up there. Yeah, just bus bars, nothing really to tear up there. But this little BMS right here, which is the brains of the operation, the gatekeeper, if you will, for this battery to let anything in or out of it. You can see all the little, look at all the little tiny electronics on there. Tiny little stuff. Just little bitty stuff ripe for getting smoked. So if you've got it wired up, which you can see there's already wires on here, so you already got some antennas on there to pick up surge. So that's, that's the tractor number one and there's always power to this board. Any of the BMSs that's on, on batteries are always hot to the board. 
the battery voltage is hot to it so there's always voltage present so that's strike number two against it there's no way to disconnect it without going inside your battery opening it up and removing the bms so you can put a regular surge protector on the external wires of the battery so if you're you know imagine these wires going to a terminal block you know so let's let's go ahead and use the writing pen here so there's your your terminal block you can put a surge protector on the terminal block block dc terminal block get the fastest reacting one you can get uh, midnight solar's dc ones for batteries are rated at, i think 15 nanoseconds so that's pretty quick now that'll protect the wiring but still the bms is under a piece of plastic in the battery and it's exposed so the e1 pulse will come down and just a little thin sheet of plastic and so that's pretty much smoked it's over with you get the e1 pulse you're done now if you had a glance and blow further out and you was out of line of sight so on and so forth they might make it but uh i highly highly doubt if you're you're under the stronger part of the uh the emp that the bms is going to make it so how do we remedy that situation well you can use lead acid batteries or agm batteries which i don't prefer those yeah they have yeah their emp resilience outweighs you know a lithium but for day-to-day off-grid living you can't beat lithium i mean you really can't so you could if you got spare batteries you could have you know or take your batteries offline if there's a big threat and just deal without your power for a few days faraday cage them emp bag them trash can method whatever method floats your boat we can go over that more later too and another thing uh you could do is just stock spare parts so uh, the bolt the bolt on BMS is like the larger batteries you can swap on them out in five to ten minutes of basic electrical knowledge it's not that hard to swap them out so if I can get a spare battery I will show you how to change out a BMS on one of the larger batteries but I'll put a link in the description I looked up the BMS's for the zooms and get the 100 amp BMS you know, a little bit larger than this more robust of course it's just a little bitty little bitty feller here uh, anywhere from 20 to 25 dollars for a 100 amp rated BMS so that's the best option in my my opinion now you know, others have made different opinions but i have the adage of just stock some spare bms and stock some some extra parts you know two or three of them per battery if you, if you got enough resources to do that so if you get you know one gets zapped or even just day-to-day -day operation you know something something can go wrong with this it's electronic i mean something can fail in it so you can stock extra extra parts would probably be the best method because I said you can do the transit voltage suppression on the lines, but it's still exposed, still going to get smoked. So that's uh, the best option I got at the moment for that. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Just a basic rundown of uh, you know lead versus lithium, and you know any question or anything about lithium batteries, uh, go ahead and put it in the comments. And also, I don't know if I mentioned it in the video, but this came out of a solar generator portable power pack. I did a teardown on a solar generator and I'll link the video to that in case you want to uh, to see a internal workings of a, a portable power station as well. But anyhow, I hope you liked today's video. If you don't mind, hit that like button. Questions, put it in the comments. If you're not subscribed, I greatly appreciate the subscription from you. Thank you for watching the Off Mountain Homestead. Hope you all have a nice day.